All right, Paul, I'm excited. It looks to me like we have all the ingredients necessary to solve the Friedman equation. Now, this equation is a differential equation, which is second year university maths. Yep. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to solve it using an approximate numerical method. It actually turns out for the real universe, you have to use it numerically. There is actually no proper analytic uh, mathematical solution to it, so you're not losing anything by doing this. Yeah, and that, that numerical solution may be something that none of you have really seen before, but it's built up on the very fundamental basics of calculus, uh, so you should be able to understand it and follow it pretty easily. Yeah, so the basic idea is, um, we know everything here right now. We're going to define a of t as 1 right now. Why are we going to do that? Well, we can define it as anything we like. We can call it 47 or 2 or anything you like. This just defines the coordinates we use. This is telling us the ratio of x to r. And we can measure the coordinates of anything we like. So let's just define a scale factor as 1 right now. So that's very convenient is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. And if you look at this in some literature places, you'll sometimes see people sometimes define k as either being plus or minus 1. That means a is not going to be 1 right now. You can choose either assumption you like. Um, for this calculation, we're going to assume that a is 1 now, which means k can have a Has range of values. Be big, bigger than 1 or less than... Yeah. Um, bigger yeah. less than zeros. Yeah. So, okay, so let's assume the scale factor is 1 now. So we're measuring the size of the universe at any time in the future and past relative to its size now. Yep. And uh, we know a dot right now from Hubble's constant. Yep. And let's assume we know what the density is now. At least we'll assume a density now, some fraction of the critical density, maybe more yep. or less than the critical density. And so we then know how we can it changes go back in time, so no problem. So all our ingredients are there. So what we need to do is work out a dot, which is the rate of change of the scale factor, dA by dt, yep. right now. And it's given by just rearranging this equation, taking the square root and moving a up the side there. Uh, so we have the change of a is equal to a, a. plus this other junk, mm -hmm. some of which is going to change also as a function of a. Okay. Yes, I mean, this is density is going to go as 1 over a cubed or a to the fourth, and there's 1 over a squared over there. So this makes it rather complicated to solve. Um, so we've got density goes as density today, either 1 over a cubed or 1 over a to the fourth, depending whether we're radiation relativistic stuff or matter dominated. Now, the method we're going to use here is the simplest possible numerical method. This is called Euler's method. Euler, yeah. I never knew who this guy Euler was when I went to university. Uh, I knew there was this guy named Euler, E-U-L-E-R. Turns out he's Euler. So just in case you haven't put that together, I'll tell you. Okay. So this method is the simplest possible numerical method. In practice, in real world, you'd solve it using a more complicated method, but this actually gives you quite accurate enough answers for any purpose you'd really want. What it's telling us is, let's say we know A of t right now, we do because we defined it as yep. 1. What's the A of t going to be some little time in the future or some little time in the past? Now, if you make that time step, that delta t, small enough, a isn't going to change very much over this time interval. Density isn't yep. going to change very much over this interval. So as long as you make delta t small, we can solve this equation we've dealt with previously um, because these things are all going to be more or less constant over a small time interval. Yep. So the idea is the A at some time in the future or some time in the past is going to be the A of now plus A dot, the rate of change of A, times delta t. Yeah, and as to the level that this isn't changing over that time delta t, it's exactly right, because we have to remember that, of course, a dot is dA dt, or delta A over delta t, where those delta t's are really, really small. Yeah. So this is actually basically the definition of calculus. It's yes. saying that the, the, how much something moves is equal to where it is now, plus the gradient times the time. Right. And so you put together a little program, a little... Uh, Spreadsheet to go through and calculate, so a little program. Yes, we've got a little Python program yep. that will take you through this, and it's available on the web page here. And so you can pick any value of density and um, uh, you like and see how the universe is going to change going into the future. But oh. let, before we show you the results of this program, let's actually try and think through how it's going to behave. It always makes it, you should never trust any program until you can see in your brain how it's going to behave. Good. So let's pick the simplest case. K equals zero, a flat universe. What's going to happen now? Well, the last term here um, disappears because k is 0. Yep. So you just get a dot is equal to a, 8 pi g, rho naught over a cubed. This is for uh, matter dominated. It would be a to the fourth for radiation yep. dominated. So that's telling us for matter dominated, what have you got? 
So we end up with the change of a is equal to, is proportional to 1 over the square root of a. So that means that when a is really small, the rate of change in the universe is really big. But then as a gets bigger and bigger and bigger, eventually the universe expansion gets smaller and smaller because 1 over a really big number, 1 over a really big number becomes a very small number. So what it's telling us is the universe, we know that a dot is positive right now, the universe is expanding. And it's always going to be positive. The universe will always expand. No matter how big A gets, this is always going to be 1 over the square root of a number. But as the universe gets older and older and older and bigger and bigger, the rate of expansion will decrease, but it will never reach zero. It'll always, well, maybe as it get, A goes to infinity, it'll reach zero, but yep. not, not before infinity. So we expect the universe to sort of grind to a halt. It doesn't ever quite reaches the halt. Yeah, so if you, you get the output of the program, it turns out this particular case, uh, k equals zero, you can solve. Yep. And we'll show that in the reference notes. <coughs> so what you get is, if it's matter dominated, a of t goes as t over t naught to the two-thirds. If it's radiation dominated, it's the half power. But this is exactly what we've seen. It starts off expanding very fast and always drops off because it's going as one over root t. Mm. And slows down and slows down and slows down, but never stops. Okay. I kind of like that as a universe. Seems sensible to me. Okay, so that's the flat universe, k equals zero, and it will last forever, and will keep on expanding, but it will be expanding pretty slowly in the far future. Yeah. How about k greater than zero? What's going to this equation do now? All right, so let's think. So we've got uh, this uh, a dot term, and we're going to have to multi you know, we're going to have to, I guess, look at, uh, that's sort of the Hubble constant, that's how fast the universe is expanding squared. And density is going as density now divided by a cubed, or a to the fourth. And then here we have a squared, which means as a gets big, both, this... Yeah. Both, the, both these things are going to get smaller, yep. but this one's going to get smaller faster, because it's going as 1 over a cubed raised to the fourth. That's only 1 over a squared. Right. So that means that as we let the universe evolve, this will end up eventually being bigger than that term because of that a squared versus a cubed, or a to the fourth. But hold on a minute. If this term gets bigger, we said k is positive, that's minus. That means a dot is going to have to go negative. The universe is going to have to stop expanding and start shrinking. Right, so that when that turns, when this begins to dominate over that, the universe is going to change gears effectively and go into reverse. So that tells you you expect the universe as it gets bigger, well, bigger eventually to change signs. So that's a very interesting... Yeah issue here, isn't it? Here's what you get if you solve this using the same program. And you see the universe is getting bigger at the present, but it will slow down, slow down, and eventually it'll stop at the point where the second term becomes equal and opposite to the first term. And then it's going to start shrinking. Right. So the universe begins with a big bang here, but you seem to be hesitant to plot the Ganab Gib here, Paul. Well, the program at the end, just the big bang. set to go to uh, 30. But yes, yes, the universe will eventually come back to zero size at the end. So everything will expand, stop, come back together into what's often called the big crunch. Yep, the Ganab Gib, much better word. So Ganab Gib being big bang spelt backwards. Yes. So, okay, so this is an interesting universe that sounds like it's very exciting at the beginning and at the end. Okay, so this is what we get for k greater than zero, which is a closed spherical universe, if you like. Yep. How about uh, k less than zero? Okay. Well, in this case, this term is still going to dominate when a gets big enough. Yep. But now, because that's negative, there's a minus sign. Minus times minus equals plus. So that term over there will be a plus. And we've got a dot over a here. So if we, um, that means we've got an a squared up there, a squared at the bottom. So that's going to be a constant, k c squared. Right, so a constant amount of acceleration. That's like just having the rocket engine on forever. So you're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yes, yeah, so in this case, it will <coughs> expand fast to begin with and slow down, but it won't slow down to zero, but it'll slow down to kc squared. So right. it'll have an asymptotic value, straight line up here, which will just keep it expanding very fast. Right, so a universe that keeps going, not dissimilar to giving, for example, a rocket escape velocity, even though you turn the rocket ship's aw engines off, it keeps on going away from Earth if you get it going faster than the escape velocity. Yes, the, very much an analogy to throwing a ball up in the air. Right. So if, for example, I throw it up slowly enough, it'll come back down again, and that's equivalent to the k greater than zero case. Yep. The universe expands and then shrinks again. If I throw it at just the escape velocity, it will cruise to zero velocity to infinity, 
yep. which is the k equals zero case. And if I throw it really fast, then it will keep on bombing out to infinity at some high speed, like a rocket. Yep. And that or like one of the Pioneer space probes or something. Yeah. Yes, and that will head off something like this. So right. these are our three models for the dynamics of the universe. Uh, in our simple model here, we have a universe that will come back to a halt, a universe that keeps going forever, and a universe that keeps on going forever faster.